Welcome back to Power Lunch, everybody. Airlines fighting over the top tier customers today. Delta opening a new lounge at New York's JFK Airport, designed to be nicer, a little more exclusive than its current uh, Delta clubs, which had gotten to some views crowded. Phil LeBeau is at the new Delta One Lounge <laughs> with Delta CEO Ed Bastian. Phil, gentlemen. Tyler, thank you very much. Ed. Hey, Phil. Tyler set it up perfectly, saying it's a, a little nicer, a little more exclusive, plenty of elbow room here. Why the Delta One Lounge? Because this is not just another Sky Club. Yeah, this is not another Sky Club. And by the way, our Sky Clubs are great. And yes, they're overcrowded, and we're working on that too. One of the ways we're working on it is upscaling the next uh, set of lounges. And so this is a Delta One Lounge. Only for customers that are flying Delta One, 360s will have access. But people that want to have that next level premium experience will have a great time here. I do believe it's the nicest lounge, certainly in North America. One of the nicest lounges, candidly, in the world. And as people see it, as we open it tonight, I think that's what the review will come by. Almost 40,000 square feet. 40,000 square feet. And the other benefit we get is as we open this lounge, it takes a lot of that pressure off of our pre-existing club at JFK, which is a nice lounge, but when it's crowded, it's not so nice. So we'll actually get two lounges for one as we open this. Have you heard from your frequent flyers saying, look, there's too many people in the lounges, not just here at JFK, but at other lounges around the country, and that the experience, frankly, it's lost its allure. We, we have heard that, but candidly, that's an old tape that was more the last two years as everyone started to come back to flying quickly. Uh, we've implemented some pretty significant access issues in terms of increasing the qualification levels, both for our own people as well as for our customers. And it's already the, the overall density of the clubs and the, the crowded conditions are coming down pretty meaningfully. We're adding new clubs. Not only do we have this at JFK, we're adding a new Delta One Lounge exclusive in L.A. as well as Boston by the end of the year. We're opening up a new one also in Seattle, probably start of next year. So we're adding more and more real estate and higher end clubs. So you know, stay with us over the course of the next year or two. This is just going to continue to get better and better. Ed, I know Kelly's got a question for you. Kelly? Thank you. And well, I, I, I think I'd rather talk about the lounge. But I, Ed, I just have a quick question for you about what's going on with Boeing and Airbus. And, and you guys are more of an Airbus shop, if I'm not mistaken. They are now talking about some delays in plane deliveries this year. Do you have any frustration overall with the kind of the availability of reliable aircraft? Well, I think everyone in the industry is frustrated. Uh, that said, I'm glad we're with Airbus, and they've been delivering us airplanes fairly regularly over the last several years. This year, we'll take approximately 50 uh, new Airbus uh, planes in, and they're coming a little bit delayed, but not in a meaningful sense, and uh, we're in a pretty good shape there. But I think it's far beyond just Boeing and Airbus. I think it gets into the engines, the overall supply chain constraints that are still out there. It's keeping a lid on capacity, no question. How long does that last, those supply chain issues that are in really the entire aviation industry? I think, I think you know, first of all, we'll never get back to where we could have been at one point, because this has been going on for years at, already at this stage. I think you're looking at another three to five years, because this is about labor, this is about parts, this is about ensuring that you have the right quality specs, you know, with the FAA getting, FAA getting a whole lot more energized around the certification process. So I think this is going to continue to be some of the challenges that we see in our industry in terms of the constraint. We almost had three million people flying in the United States for the first time on Sunday. The FAA and the TSA both believe we're going to see that the 4th of July week at some point. Um, are you comfortable with where the industry is as we continue to see these record levels in terms of the infrastructure, handling the increased capacity, the increased number of flights? I am. We've been seeing it all along. Memorial Day weekend was a, was a very significant uh, high water mark for us. I think the 4th of July, as you said, will be another uh, higher water mark yet. Uh, we're not adding necessarily new planes. We're filling them up even, even higher, so we're flying loads consistently in the 90% range, maybe 95% range on certain days. So it's not as, as if we can get more seats in the sky, but we're putting more people in them. And a lot of those people are flying Delta over to the Olympics. Absolutely. I look forward to You'll that. be there, too. We will. Ed Bastian, CEO of Delta. Kelly, we'll send it back to you.